Hi, and welcome. My name is Kerry Schaefer, and I have invited Carolyn Opterbeck to my kitchen today to show us how to make scones. Now, for those of you that don't know, Carolyn has been involved with our Women's Ministry Committee and events for many, many years, and our tea has been going on for over 15 years, and all of those 15 years, Carolyn has been involved. She's spoken at it. She's been instrumental in organizing it, but one of the most important contributions to any tea is our scones, right? What would a tea be without scones? And Carolyn is the master scone baker. <laughs> so who better to learn from how to make the most delicious tea scones than from Carolyn? So just a reminder, our tea is coming up this year, our virtual tea. Um, it will be April 17th from two to four on that Saturday. And you can join in numerous ways. Feel free to check out our website author gospel um, church's website under women's ministries find out how you can get involved as an attendee as a hostess and of course how to bake these amazing scones so carolyn thank you for joining me today and you're going to teach me the secret because there are yeah many secrets she has there is a secret and uh, it's really not so much of a secret but i did you know find out about it on um, probably watching martha stewart or something like <laughs> that and it really it, it's, it makes it easier to do them for one thing and it's uh it just makes a very tender scone uh so we you know as we're working on this i'll show you what it is okay. and just remember this is the secret and it involves the butter so just pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> and the secret we're sharing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, great. So Yeah, so what we're gonna do first, you're gonna do all your dry ingredients. Okay. So put them in the bowl. That's okay. the flour. All right, don't do that. Two cups of flour, I think, right? Yeah, this is and two cups. A third of a cup of granulated sugar. Okay. And a tablespoon of baking powder. And a half a teaspoon of salt. And that's this one. And then what we're going to do is whisk that together. Okay. Do you want me to do it or you want to do it? That's it. That's it. I'm teaching you. So okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You I'm going to, I'm the apprentice scone baker. <laughs> yeah, you, then, then you can have a <laughs> Then I can upgrade to master. I think it'll take some time, but I will try. Yeah, it's not hard. <laughs> it's not hard. It really, it, they're, they're very quick to make. They really are. Right, right, right. They don't seem too hard. I think sometimes we get intimidated because yes. when you've had a scone, they just, they taste so delicate and del delicious and kind of a gourmet treat. So they seem hard. Okay. Okay, so before we started, uh, we put the butter in the freezer mm -hmm. and you don't want to leave it there, but it's a good thing to do it just before you start because when it's really cold, this next part is the secret. Okay. So Should you're going to get your butter and that's okay. six tablespoons Sweet. of butter. Sorry. And very often when I do this, I make a double batch because uh, they go fast. <laughs> Most of the time I give them away. Right. Uh, so what you're going to do with your butter is use your grater. And I use one of the larger openings on the grater probably this one okay and you're just going to grate your butter into your dry ingredients all right perfect and how many um, scones does usually a batch make you know about six or seven okay it, depending on you know whether you want them really big uh it makes a nice size scone kind of the, the size that you would find if you would go to whole foods or something like oh, that. Okay. but these are better yes they're much better well they're not only made from scratch which maybe whole foods is too but they're made with an extra measure of love right yeah. when you're making them for somebody so just like this carolyn yeah just scrape it in it, it gets it's a little hard you know yes but, but, it's, uh, but it's, it's, worth, it's worth it because it saves a lot of time. It's not cutting in your butter. Um, we're just going to use our hands, and you should wash your hands before yes, you start. Which we did too. <laughs> we already did. That's right. And it also helps. I know I have made things where you have to cut in butter, and sometimes you just get these clumps of butter that even your hands right. can't work out. So it kind of leads to kind yeah, of Yeah, and chunk. the thing is, when you bake them, if your clumps are, are large, sometimes they'll melt out. Mm. And I've had that, you know, where it ends up being a smoky mess. So yes. This this just makes it a great size this is to genius. incorporate it into the dry ingredients. 
this is such a great little tip that you can even use for other recipes that you have. Absolutely. To yep. Cut butter in like a pie crust or something, mm -hmm. right? That sometimes, and to freeze it definitely makes it because it's not at all mushy in my hands, even after handling it, it's still pretty firm. So it makes it very easy to do and gives you a good little workout too. <laughs> Alright, and just watch your fingers, yeah, right? As you get to the very end. Turn it a little bit. And get that last little bit in there. Okay. Alright. And good. that's the last you little know, bit. And what I'll do now is I'll, I'll demonstrate yes. you know how I'm gonna start to incorporate sure. this. Perfect. So that uh, you know you can even do it. So what I do then is I take take this and break it up a little bit and then take the flour and bring it over the butter and get it in as much as you can and then start you can do this you okay. want to do this sure. so then you start to crumble it into that that's that's awesome because i was thinking it was all the butter was right on top it was like a mountain yeah no so you, you really you really have first. to get it in there that's great so just until until it's about the size of peas okay my goodness, I can see my girls loving to do this, especially when they were little, they would love to play with food and get your hands in there, yeah. right? So you can have your kids or grandkids kind of helping out with this part maybe. Okay. Yeah, you can kind of feel it starting to get like little. Yeah, and you, like you can pretty beads. much see, you know, if, you, if any of them are large. Yes. But this is so much better than when you try to cut it in with it is. even it's, a pastry it's plunger. It's much easier. It's so much easier. I don't feel any I'm chunks. I'm so glad when I found that out. Yes, I love. Sometimes it's those little tips, right, that make your it's right. cooking experience that much better and, of course, tasting it much better, too. Okay, and at this point, whatever you're going to add, whether it's blueberries or cranberries or raisins, you're going to add them now. And you're okay. going to mix that in there. And it doesn't, what, like a cup or so, or just kind of a, however many you... I usually put about a cup or so. Okay. And and the thing is, if you're using blueberries, it coats the blueberries so that they don't just all sink to the bottom. Okay, and you still use and your hands? So now you're going to mix that in there. Okay. And then, then we're going to take our, you need a bowl for this. Okay. And your whisk. And you're going to put your eggs in there, two eggs, two large eggs. I'll just I'll throw this one over here. This is like my little extra runaway bowl. No and shelf. And your cream, and that was, uh, I think, was three, three fourths of three a cup. Three quarters of a cup of heavy cream. Heavy cream. You can use heavy cream. You can use half and half. Uh, I mean, you're going to mix that together, mix okay. it very well so that it's all incorporated. Mm, the cream just alone looks so decadent. <laughs> and you said you could also substitute half and half if you didn't have cream. Yeah, you know, I've done a half and half in the past. Lately, I've been using the heavy cream. This, this particular recipe does pull for heavy, heavy cream. Mm -hmm. I've seen it with half and half. I wouldn't use just milk. You're not going to get that rich. This makes a very nice, rich scone. Mm -hmm. This is another one of those kind of secrets, though, right? To yeah, use the heavy right. cream. Okay. So what you'll okay. do then is incorporate that in here. And then okay. I usually use, to mix that, I usually use a fork. Okay. Get that all. Until it's all, in Ooh. all incorporated. Well, you don't do that usually. <laughs> A little slippery, but that's okay. Until it's all incorporated. Okay. Uh, Ooh, I made a big one. That's okay. All right, here's fork. The fork is good. So yeah. just go. So, but we don't want to overmix. So you want to make okay. sure there's nothing of the dry ingredients that they're all in there. This dough will be sticky when you finally, you know, get to that point okay. where, you, where we're going to shape it. So still go a little because so it's still you can a little just bit make dry. Sure. And then uh, got to get that all from the bottom, right? Sometimes I know. The, yeah, it's uh, the and then, you know, then you can then you can once you sort of have it all incorporated, then you're gonna I I actually knead it because you're supposed to knead it a little bit okay. right in the bowl. Okay, so I can kind of right do that bowl. now. And uh, okay. 
and then you'll, you'll be able to uh, shape it. So okay. just, just make sure everything's Ooh. in there. Turn it all over. <laughs> but there's definitely You're doing someone. a good job. Oh, good. <laughs> well, you're a good teacher, Carolyn. And not only is she a great scone baker teacher, but she's even better Bible teacher. <laughs> Carolyn's been such a mainstay at our church, and God has just gifted her. So lot, a woman of many gifted talents from the Lord, for sure. Okay, definitely can see it's kind of starting to take okay, shape. Okay, so what, what you're going to do with this let me just show you yeah. so we get this. Yeah, you get not the neatest finger. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you have to clean okay. your hands, right? Yes. So if you go in there, get in there, you know, really get in there and as if you're kneading something. And I'm turning okay. it over. And you know, when I feel that I've gotten most of the flour, then I'm gonna shape it. Are you gonna do it on the counter? Is that sure. what you're Sure, yeah, yeah. It's all cleaned, sanitized. Uh, yeah, we can little... do it. You know, we can do it right on there. Oh, perfect. All right, let me right. grab that. Um, our hands are a little yeah. sticky. Actually, let me just, can I wash them real quick? That way I don't get. Yeah. Okay. Here. One of the things that, that makes it really good, too, is that you don't try to flatten it and shape it because you want those craggy shapes in there. You want it to have, it'll look a little broken. Okay. So we're gonna take that. Okay, I wanna put it on And you can, you can either, I would probably do it right in there, right okay. in the tray because we're gonna separate the little pieces. Okay. But so you're, you're gonna, gonna make about on. a seven inch round of okay. this. Want me to do it? Sure. We'll take this, this out. This is another one of those secret. Seven inch round. So I'm trying to be careful not to, you know, a little, maybe an inch or so thick, but you'll see there are little cracks in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to go and flatten it all out. Okay. And then you're going to divide it into about seven pieces. Okay. And we'll separate use... them and then they'll be ready to bake. Can we use like a pizza cutter to do that? Or yeah, a roller sure. or a knife? Yeah, you should use a knife. Okay. And while you're doing that, I'm going to wash mine. Okay, I'm going to have a knife over here. So into almost like cutting a pie? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've covered it. Like triangular pieces. If you really want, you could also, you know, take a little handful and make them round. Oh, okay. Uh, I usually do it, make them this way where I'm cutting it into shapes of triangles. Okay. Kind of. And you're gonna cut those in half now. Okay. And you'll have eight. Perfect. They are, they're just so nice and thick. And then they spread, right? When you yeah, put and them... then okay, go ahead. Cut them, and then then we'll separate them. Okay. On the on the sheet. Okay. I think I got all the way to the bottom. Sometimes I'm hitting in a raisin or two, <laughs> so I'm not sure if I got all the way to the bottom. But we'll leave the knife, and then I can just kind of yeah, great put that on top. Don't want to lose any of it. It's like so good. Okay. Okay. And then we're gonna take it, and we're just gonna separate them. It's some, this is a little, you know, they are sticky mm -hmm. and that's okay. And they should be. So okay. we're just separating them on the, on the uh, cookie sheet. And you should have them a little bit spaced out because they, uh, they spread. If, it, if it comes apart, I'm just going to add it somewhere. Okay. It doesn't have to be a perfect shape and we're separating them okay. so that we can bake them. And then you're going to take an egg. Okay, oh, let me grab another egg real quick. I think that's good. And you're going to break the egg. Okay. And um, do we need just the it, yolk or the whole it. egg? Pardon? Just the yolk or the whole egg? No, the whole egg. You know, I used the just yes, the yolk and the and the white. Okay. If the recipe called for that. You okay. can do just the white, but okay. I did the whole egg, okay. and that's that's actually what the recipe calls for. Okay, and then, and we, then you did. mix that, and then you're going to brush the tops of just a wash 
okay. of, of an egg wash on top. Okay. So just kind of of each scone. Mm. And this gives it its nice kind of golden yeah. brown color. Yeah, wait, wait, wait till we take them out of the oven. Mm. So exciting. And <laughs> Sorry you can't enjoy them with us, but we'll make sure to get the recipe out so everybody can, you can try this at home. <laughs> And there are definitely cracks, so kind of guess, guess get into those little cracks, right? Looks so good. And last one. And once you're done with that, you're just going to take your sugar. Okay. I think and uh, sprinkle each one with just a little sugar on top. And then it will be baked at 400 degrees. And it takes about 20 minutes. Okay. What I usually do is in, in the middle, I'll look and see how, how they're going and uh, I might turn, it might turn the cookie tray. Gotcha, so they're kind of evenly. Yeah, so everything is through. even, depends on your oven, I guess. Okay, a little extra sugar, it doesn't hurt. Okay, <laughs> that's all that's to it. So all you have to easy. do is bake it. So, all right. So you'll be able to put them in the oven. Okay. And at about 20 minutes, Does it matter? Should it be more like in the middle of the oven? Yeah, you know, around? the lower part. Is, okay. You know, the, the recipe actually says in this one to put it in the lower part of the oven. And I found when you do that, you really get a nice crunch on the bottom. You want these to be crunchy on the outside and tender on the inside. So we do have it where yes. it's already been baked to try them. Enjoy. So we have our... So excited eight scones what we did came out to be eight scones and the one thing that is really makes them good is that they have broken you know cracked up a little bit and you don't have this real smooth scone so that when you do eat them they are going to be crunchy they're the so, real deal. They're definitely not Whole Foods scones, for sure. <laughs> I'm gonna try one. Sorry to eat in front of everybody, but these look scrumptious. They're good, aren't they? Amazing. <laughs> so good. A it's little just cup of tea. a recipe, and it's just those those few little Amazing. extra touches that make them make them what they are, which everybody says. Oh, I want to try your scones. It's, mm -hmm. it's not me. It's just the way I did it. <laughs> so, so yeah, and they make great uh, gifts, really. Mm -hmm. uh, people love it. You know, somebody's sick and you want to give them something and bring them something, just bring me scones and, and that's it. So I, I often do that. But uh, you can also freeze these mm -hmm. after you, if you make too many of them and you don't want to eat the whole batch, you can freeze them, take them out of the freezer when you're ready, and don't warm them up in the microwave, maybe just a few seconds, mm -hmm. but heat them, reheat them in the oven the way you did it this time. With 400 degrees, it takes maybe just a few minutes, and you'll, you'll have a nice fresh scone. So that's, that's the recipe. And I would definitely need to freeze these, or I'd say eat them all in one sitting. So for me, that's really good portion control <laughs> and to hide them from my family. No, I'd share. <laughs> but, oh, Carolyn, thank you so much. Oh, we really fun. appreciate it you coming glad, over. I'm glad because, uh, you know, why keep everything to yourself, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. There are no, no secrets it here. <laughs> secrets worth sharing for sure. So, and it's no secret that Carolyn has been just a treasure to the women's ministry at Hawthorne and to our church family. So we thank her and we hope to see you all virtually on the 17th. Have a great day.